Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Keep It Real. Heart attacks are one of those things that everybody would like to avoid. There's nobody that wants to have a heart attack. But there's not enough people that are really doing enough of the right things to avoid a heart attack. And so it's still the number one killer in the US, cardiovascular disease, so heart attacks and strokes. Um, so there is some recent information that uh, that we get from uh, a recent publication. In fact, it was just published earlier this month in the British Medical Journal, which is one of the top tier journals um, in the UK. And they gave us um, another piece of information that uh, the more things that we can put together, the greater the chance that we're gonna avoid, you know, something as serious as a, as a heart attack. And so they looked at, um, they looked at a really, really large uh, population set. They looked at over 400,000 patients. And so to help us really understand the validity of a particular study, there's multiple factors that contribute to making the information more valid. And one of them is a large uh, patient pool or subject pool. And over 400,000 is considered a large study. And we can really take the information for what it says. And here's what they came up with. They found out that um, uh, a certain type of medication called NSAIDs, you've heard of them, um, like ibuprofen, naproxen, Aleve, uh, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, that's NSAID. And these medications are very, very common. Ibuprofen is, you can just buy it over the counter and a lot of people just pop them like candy. And it's to help decrease pain and inflammation. But unfortunately, it comes with a, a pretty heavy price to, price to pay. And what they found out is that um, taking these NSAID medications dramatically increases your risk of getting a heart attack. Um, the technical name for a heart attack is a myocardial infarction. And what that means is there's a cutoff of blood supply to a part of the heart, and that part of the heart starts to die very quickly, and a person has a heart attack. Um, so uh, what they found out is that taking, you know, what we used to think, this is not really new information about NSAID use and risk of uh, heart attack, but what we thought before, what studies have indicated before, is that it's more the, the chronic use of these medications that could increase the chance of somebody developing um, a heart attack. But this study, um, came out with uh, different information. They added to the story of the way that these medications increase heart attack, and the time frame has changed dramatically. In fact, the studies show that within just one week of taking uh, the medication, uh, the heart attack risk goes up really, really significantly. So it doesn't have to be long-term. In fact, long-term use was about the same as short-term. So just taking ibuprofen for a short period of time could dramatically increase your chance of developing um, a heart attack. So the bigger issue here to think about is how much uh, pain and inflammation people are in. Uh, inflammation is a really common cause of pain and these uh, anti-inflammatory medications like ibuprofen and NSAIDs help to decrease inflammation to make the person feel better. But there's lots of other ways that you can consider um, lowering uh, inflammation associated uh, pain. Um, here's, let me just come up with an example. Let's think about headaches. Headaches is a pretty common reason why people take um, ibuprofen. Um, so let's consider some really common causes of headaches that if you do these things, it'll probably dramatically decrease your risk for getting a headache and decrease the need for taking an NSAID medication. Um, so low blood sugar. Low blood sugar is a very, very common cause of headaches. It's one of my first questions when I have a patient. In fact, I just had a new patient yesterday and the main issue that she's coming to see me for is chronic headaches. Uh, four years she's had these chronic headaches, very severe, three to four very severe headaches. Uh, she's on all kinds of medications and she doesn't want to have to take them, but that's what she has to do right now. And one of the first things, and it was true in her case, that she allows her blood sugar to really drop. She skips meals very frequently. And after you know taking lots of medical intakes from lots of patients, skipping meals is not uncommon. 
it's very common whether it's breakfast or lunch or some people's bodies can get away with that and some pe some people's bodies can't but if chronic headaches are a person's issue and they're skipping meals that goes to the top of the list of things that we want to consider uh, changing to help them um, maintain their blood sugar because when, when blood sugar drops it could cause different changes in the body um, that can lead to headaches so that's one another one is dehydration just a mild amount of dehydration whether it's low water intake or or the electrolytes are off like sodium potassium um, dehydration has to be considered you have to consider both of those things water intake but also electrolytes and just a mild amount of dehydration could cause um, changes in your vasculature can ch cause a changes in your muscle tone and those could lead to headaches so dehydration and low blood sugar are two very common reasons another one is um, stress stress is just kind of the, the great magnifier it's maybe not a direct cause of a lot of things although it can be it's at least a magnifier so if somebody is stressed for example on top of having low blood sugar then that's a really ripe situation for some kind of symptom manifesting and a lot of people that's headaches so um, so stress is one of these things that sometimes is not within our control but oftentimes it is and we might not even think that it is but it can be if you really take a step back and observe the situation so we've talked about three things so far um, low blood sugar dehydration and uh, chronic or severe uh, stress um, another one is um, is physical stress or physical um, let's call it um, neck tightness neck pain when the muscles of the upper neck get really tight which is extremely common because people are looking at their laptop computers they're looking down at their handheld device all the time their cell phone um, so much more than really what the head and neck are designed for so the muscles get tighter and tighter and tighter and then even when they're not in that position they've, they've maintained this chronic level of tightness and um, tight muscles in the upper neck could really cause severe headaches um, there's a certain referral pattern of muscle tightness that when these muscles of the the back of the neck get tight they refer pain right up the back of the head sometimes on top of the head and sometimes it feels like the pain is right behind the eye and that very likely has nothing to do with the eye itself but it has a lot to do with the muscles in the back of the neck so those are just four uh, basic things there's lots of other reasons why a person might get headaches but those are just four things that are really common and things that people can start to uh, change immediately and really help to decrease their chance of headaches and this is just one type of pain that people take ibuprofen for there's lots of other types of, of pain in different uh, areas of the body sometimes acute sometimes chronic but most of the time um, there's oftentimes a, a natural solution to one of these issues where um, oftentimes pharmaceuticals are prescribed. Because remember, one of my main objectives of the show is to challenge the status quo of pharmaceutical medicine um, and come up with solutions and discuss solutions that um, are straight out of research that have been validated and, um, and people can start to apply in their life right away. So I hope that starts to help. Um, really, really be uh, conservative with your use of these medications. Make sure it's an absolute last option and make sure it's just for a very, very short period of time. But there's lots of other ways that you can decrease uh, pain and inflammation like we just discussed. And there's more options out there, some of which I'll um, discuss in future episodes. So stay tuned and keep it real.